Hello and welcome to Outdoors and That. In this video we are going to be looking at contour lines and elevation and so this is going to help us work out the slope of the land and what we can see on our maps and relate it to the landscape that's around us. In this video I'm standing on the side of a hill and the trees are growing vertically and then the land is sloping away on either side of that. And if I was to walk up or downhill, then I'm gonna to start to cross contour lines and gain or lose elevation. For that video, I was standing just where my pointer is. And you can see if I was to go up the hill, which I continued to do, then I'm gonna start crossing contour lines. And when the contour lines are close together, like we see here, that's indicating that you don't have to cover much distance horizontally on the map to start changing elevation quickly. And so the alternate to that is down here, say, where we have larger gaps between the contour lines. The elevation between these two locations is only changing 10 metres over a much larger distance, whereas here we have 10 metres of change over a much shorter distance. To calculate changes in the elevation, you are going to use the contour lines that have the elevation number on it. So here we have the 700 one. And to calculate the difference between the saddle and the top of Old Joe Hill here, I'm going to count up my contour lines. So I've got 700, 710, 720. So the saddle is above 720 but below 730. Then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 more contour lines. So that's 70 meters. Then I reach my 800 meter contour line. So that is 80 meters and that links in with the change down here and then I have on the top of Old Joe Hill a spot height so 813 is the exact top and so then I know my change is from 813 back to 720 plus a little bit and so that gives me a 90 meter contour change. Spot heights are locations on a map where we have a marked elevation and so it's got a little dot and then the elevation number there and so that indicates that this location at the dot is exactly 677 metres above sea level. They're often scattered around maps and around the tops of hills or at the very centre of a large hill that has a marked name on the map such as we were just looking at Old Joe Hill before. So here we are looking up a ridge line and the land is dropping off on either side up to the summit of the hill there. On our map this ridge line is indicated by the bulge in the contour lines and the video was taken pointing in the southerly direction so looking up towards the top of the hill just here and that ridge is indicated by the bulge in the contour lines with the land dropping away to either side. Here is a good example of a ridge line and the fence in the centre there is running down the apex of the ridge and then the land is dropping off to either side of that. This video was looking towards the west, so out towards this left of screen. The fence line was running right down the centre of that V in the contour lines and then the land dropping off to either side. The ridge disappeared and that's because it started to move into a more generalised uh, hill shape that was much more circular rather than a particular uh, knife edge that we see up the top. So this is what you'd call a knoll and if I do a panorama here you can see that it's dropping away in all directions and so this is the same as a hill or a mountain but just a smaller unnamed feature and we call those knolls on our maps. A saddle is a land feature that if you were a giant you'd be able to put a leg on either side and you'd have a leg heading down one side and then the other leg down the other side and a rise to the back and a rise to the front. So just like a horse's saddle. So right here we have a really good example of a saddle. We've got a dip between two high points up there and where we are and then the land is heading up there so you could straddle this like that and it looks just like a horse's saddle which is what it's named after. Right, so just behind me we have a good example of the valley and so this is the Malongolo River but the key features we've got a decent sized river down the bottom and all the land around is sloping into the bottom of that valley. Creek lines are a feature where the water can collect from a central basin up the top 
and then it will run downhill and collect into a central stream and that's going to make a divot or cut the land out through erosional forces and create the valley eventually. In this video I'm standing here and looking towards the southeast and you can see the really nice basin of this big horseshoe of contour lines and then the creek is indicated in the middle the little blue square is our dam and then that continues down developing a larger creek this way we can see that the creek lines are marked in blue and there's also some implied uh, gullies as well which are seen throughout this section of landscape once we have enough of the smaller creek lines joining together the cartographers have changed the line to a thicker blue line and this is indicating that they expect this section of creek here to not be ephemeral and so when we just have the thin blue lines that's indicating that after rainfall you would expect to see water in these creeks but that's not going to be a permanent water source and there's not going to be a permanent water source until you move into the darker blue line there and that's showing that the catchment for that area is large enough to collect water uh, all year round for that location. Now remember this has not been double checked and this is just a guesstimate by the cartographer as to where the creek line will become a permanent water source. So here we have a good example of a cliff that is not directly marked on the map but the contour lines are telling us that there's a cliff there and so you can see on the map now that the contour lines are getting really close together and that's indicating that that's where the cliff is because the land is so steep that they're joining together and so if we were to move through that contour line section then you're not going to be traveling any horizontal distance but the contour lines are indicating that you're traveling the vertical distance which is a cliff so on our map sometimes our cliffs also have a height attached to them and so here we can see 510R and that's a relative height and so the way we can also work that out is to work out that this is the 1000 meter contour line here plus our 10 and then over here we actually have the 500 meter contour line and there's the indicator for that over there and so this interval between our heights is 510 meters for this cliff for this activity you need to get yourself a sandpit or soil or something that you can shape and you want to recreate a section of landscape on your map so you need to shape the sand into the same shape that you see on the contour lines and the idea is that you're replicating what is happening on the contour lines in your little sandpit and so here we have a knoll and a little saddle and then a larger knoll towards the north then off to the side down the ridge there's a small knoll out on the ridge line a valley on either side and we have the more flat side on the left hand side of picture and so all these features are exactly as what we see on the map as part of moving on in this course you're going to need to have a compass and the two main compass makers are silver and sunto and on your compass you need to have your magnetic needle a bezel which is able to spin and then a base plate with a directional arrow so that's the main parts of a compass that we will use and then other things which are useful are having a, a scale indicator such as the 1 to 50,000 and 1 to 25,000 ones that we have here maybe a ruler on the front a magnifying glass can be useful and then you can also get a compass with, with preset declination so you don't have to change that every time but for this course we're just going to adjust it as we go so thanks for watching this video on contour lines and elevation and we can see here we're getting to the bottom of our elevation in this landscape with the river at the bottom. So the next video is looking at on track walking, orientating the map using the landscape features which we've been looking at in this video. So go check that out over there right now. Thanks for watching Outdoors and that.